Well, are you all ready to get into the Word with me today? Yes, yes, yes. You know, it's just that time of the year, and, and we're so incredibly blessed. Yes. It's Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge, church, for us to keep all this in perspective. Yes. You know, we can get so caught up in, in the gifts and... I remember as a kid, it seemed like every year for 10 years, I got a new sled. I guess we used to get more snow than when we get now. New bicycles. I was sharing with somebody the other day how every Christmas Eve, my father would have me leave a plate of chocolate chip cookies and a glass of milk for Santa Claus. Now, you know, as soon as I went to bed, he was dunking those cookies. It's funny how we can remember these things from our childhood. But church, what the Lord would have us be mindful of now that we're saved and now that we have renewed minds, the Lord would have us focus on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The greatest gift of all. And the Lord would have me share today about Messianic prophecy. The title of the message is The Prophets Speak, The Messiah is Coming. And church, last week the Lord had me share with you about his plan to rescue and redeem mankind. How through Moses God gave us the law, but the law failed. It failed to do what God wanted it to do because of the sinful nature of man. And the Lord gave us the prophets. But most were persecuted and killed by the very people that they were attempting to minister to. But church, the love of God didn't fail. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to quit. We'll try something once, we'll try something twice, and we get frustrated and throw in the towel and try something else. But God wasn't thrown in the towel. He wasn't ready to quit trying to save you and trying to save me. Church, God used the prophets, and he used them powerfully to deliver a message of hope to mankind. Many rejected it, but many received it. In our Bible study, our weekly Bible study at my house, we've, we've been studying prophecy. We've been studying the book of the prophet Isaiah, who is, in my opinion, perhaps the most profound and prolific of the prophets. We say that three times fast. Profound, prolific prophet. Sounds like Daffy Duck. Church, what we discovered about Isaiah is that Isaiah, like God, was able to transcend time and space. He was not limited by time and space. God would give him a word that applied to the Israelites coming out of Egypt centuries and centuries before. And the Lord would then give him a word that pertained to the day in which Isaiah lived. And, and then in the next sentence, he'd be dealing with the birth of Christ. And in the sentence after that, he'd be dealing with the second coming of Christ. All within a paragraph. Amazing. Well, church, the purpose of this prophetic word that God has been trying so hard to deliver to his people. Its purpose was to bring mankind to salvation. God was determined one way or another. If the law failed, so be it. If the prophets came short, so be it. But listen to this. In Romans, I shared this with you last week. In Romans 8 and 3, it says, The law of Moses was unable to save us 
because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And listen, and in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us. Oh, church, this is powerful stuff. It says he did it by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Church, we need to know this. This not only was, but this is the heart of your God. The plan since the fall of man was to save us. And this was the message that needed to be heard to sow hope into hearts. How would the Lord accomplish that? Through his prophetic word. Through messianic prophecy. Word that his prophets would deliver. Church, there were so many messianic prophecies that were fulfilled in and through Jesus, the Son of God. Friends, that's called proof. I mean, if someone said with clarity and specifics 750 years ago that something was going to happen and it happened exactly when he said, that's proof. I mean, what more proof do we need of the accuracy of the Word of God? I want you to look with me at a prophetic word delivered by Isaiah about the coming Messiah. Friends, this, this begins with the assurance that the hopelessness and condemnation that came upon man would not last forever. In Isaiah 9, I'm going to read 1 through 7 in the New Living Translation. It's speaking to those that were lost. And it says, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Oh, praise God. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled. But there will be a time in the future, listen, <clears throat> when Galilee of the Gentiles which lies along the road that runs between Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. Verse 2, it says, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of darkness, a light will shine. Friends, I want you to remember, 750 years before Jesus, this word was delivered by God's prophet. He says, you will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. In verse 4, he says, for you will break the yoke of their slavery. He's speaking about the coming Messiah. You'll break the yoke of their slavery. Listen, and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You'll break the oppressor's rod. Church, this is something to rejoice over. That means that whatever weapon the enemy is using to oppress you, Jesus is going to smash that weapon into powder. You'll break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned, for they will be fuel for the fire. You know what that's saying? Fighting a spiritual battle in the natural is fruitless. It will produce no fruit. Listen, verse 6, for a child is born. The prophet said, your solution is coming in a baby. In a baby. A child is born. But not just any child, a son. A son is given, he said. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. This speaks plainly of Jesus. Listen, the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies, that's Jesus, will make this happen. He said he's going to make it happen. God said, listen, the law didn't work. The prophets didn't work. But I sent my son and he's going to break the back of the oppressor. He's going to lift your burdens. He's going to break those yokes. He's going to set every captive free. What a word this is. huh? What a word. That darkness would be dispelled. That a great light was coming to a dark world. Amen. That yokes would be broken. That burdens would be lifted. That the oppressor's weapons would be destroyed. How? A baby would be born. God was giving his son to us and for us. Amen. Jesus would exchange his heavenly throne for an earthly one. The commander of heaven's armies was coming to defeat our enemies and set us free. Oh, friends, what makes this so particularly profound was that it was spoken by the prophet and recorded some 750 years before it happened. But church, this was only one of many Prophecies, all of which have been fulfilled in Jesus. Listen to this. Micah, the prophet Micah. In five and, uh, chapter 5 and verse 2, he says, But you, Bethlehem of Frata, are only a small village among the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins, listen, are in the distant past. Yeah, you know How far in the past? Back to Genesis 3 and 15. When God spoke the first messianic prophecy while he stood in the garden at the fall of man when he said, I'll put enmity between you and the woman. Here it is. Micah now is speaking of it. And he says, yet a ruler whose origins are in the distant past will come to you on my behalf. Oh, glory be to God, church. Glory be to God. This this prophecy was proven and fulfilled in in Matthew 2 and 1 and Luke 2, 4 through 6. Church, through his prophets, God not only told us that the Savior was coming, that a Messiah was coming, but he even told us where. It would be in Bethlehem. Come on, how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years? We knew the address. But church, this is still just a drop in the prophetic bucket. I want you to hear some of these prophecies and their fulfillments. Isaiah 7 and 4, he would be born of a virgin. Fulfilled in Matthew 1, 22, 23, Luke 1, 26 through 31. In Genesis 12 and 3, he would come from the line of Abraham. Fulfilled in Matthew 1, 1 and Romans 9, 5. In Numbers 24 and 17, it says that that he would be a descendant of Jacob. Confirmed in Matthew 1 and 2. In Genesis 49 and 10, he would come from the tribe of Judah. Confirmed in Luke 3, 3 and Hebrews 7, 14. Church, it goes on and on. But I got to read you more. In Jeremiah 31 and 15, it says that his birth would bring about the massacre of many children. This would occur at his birthplace in Matthew 2, 16 through 18. Hosea 11 and 1 said... 
he would spend a season in Egypt, which according to Matthew 2, 14 and 15, he did. <coughs> in Isaiah 43 through 5, a messenger would precede him to prepare the way, which we see in John the Baptist in Luke 3, 3 through 6. Church, there are just so many. Psalm 69 and 8, Isaiah 53 and 3, he would be rejected by his own people, as is confirmed in John 1, 11 and John 7 and 5. Church, I could stand here all day. He would be betrayed, we're told. He would be falsely accused, we were told. He would be spat upon and struck. These are all spoken prophetically. Every one of these things fulfilled in the New Testament. He would be crucified with criminals, it said. And he was. He would be given vinegar to drink, was prophesied. And he was. His hands and feet would be pierced, and they were. Soldiers would gamble for his garments, and they did. He would pray for his enemies. And as he hung there with the nails through his hands and feet, he said, Father, forgive them. He would rise from the dead, which he did. And he would ascend to heaven and take his throne again at the right hand of the Father, which he did. Church, these and so many more prophecies all fulfilled. Messianic prophecies all fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. But church, there are also prophetic profiles in the scriptures. People whose lives would be mirrored in Jesus. One such person is Joseph. Church, I hope you come away from this today with a greater appreciation for prophecy. I want you to see the parallels between Joseph and Jesus. We know that Joseph was hated, but so was Jesus. He was despised and rejected of men. Genesis 37 and 8 says of Joseph, his brothers responded, so you think you'll be our king, do you? Do you actually think you'll reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Oh, church, the parallels are astonishing. Joseph was loved by his father as Jesus was in Matthew 3 and 17 when the father said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Joseph was hated and rejected by his brothers and Jesus, we know, was despised and rejected of men. Joseph was stripped of his garments, as was Jesus in Matthew 27 and 28. Joseph was sold for silver, as was Jesus in Matthew 26 and 15. Joseph was tempted and sinned not, as Jesus was described in Hebrews 4 and 15. Joseph was condemned with two criminals, as was Jesus in Luke 23 and 32. Joseph was given complete power over Egypt, as Jesus was given all power and authority in heaven and earth. Amen. Friends, what more proof do we need? What more proof do we need than this? That God is gracious, that God is loving, that God is merciful. Friends, God loves us so much that he went to great lengths to inform us, to inform his children of wonderful things that would be coming to pass. Friends, that's called sowing hope. 
Church, God's love is real. His plan to save you is real. His prophetic word spoken by his prophets, it's all real. And the blessings promised by God's prophets are assurances to those that believe. Church, God not only said that he would do these things, he promised that he would. And God not only promised that he would, but in Jesus, God brought it all to pass. Friends, your your faith in Jesus is health to your bodies. Your faith in Jesus is life to your soul. Your faith in Jesus is eternal life To your spirit, man. Friends, our faith in God's prophetic promises makes us heirs of those things fulfilled that night in Bethlehem. Through that baby, you were saved. Through faith in that baby, you were saved. What does that mean? That means you were rescued. That means that in the midst of the darkness, Jesus reached down and pulled you out. He saved you. He rescued you. That means that healing is part of your birthright. When something's coming against your body, you got to send it to Calvary's cross. You got to look back to that manger where that baby came in God's place. To be to you all that the Father promised. Oh, friends. So much was achieved for us in the fulfillment of Messianic prophecy. Everything that was enumerated by the prophet Isaiah is yours. That darkness would be dispelled in your life. Yes. That a great light was coming to your world. Yes. That yokes would be broken mm-hmm. in your life, in the life of your loved ones. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That burdens would be lifted from your shoulders and the shoulders yes. of your loved ones. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That the oppressor's weapons would be destroyed. Those against you and me and our loved ones. Church, this was done for us. This was done for you. It was done for me. For everyone that we can reach. For everyone that has ears to hear. For everyone that has a heart to receive. For everyone that can believe that that baby Jesus was born into this world for their salvation. Worship team, you want to come? Friends, just for us, Jesus would exchange his heavenly throne for an earthly one. Huh? For you. And just for you and just for me, the commander of heaven's armies was coming to go to war for us. He was coming to defeat our enemies, to break the yokes and set the captives free. Friends, no greater gift, none could anyone receive than that gift of life. In Christ. Then that gift of salvation. Then victory. In Jesus. Our Savior. Forever. Friends this we have in Jesus. And this is what we celebrate. This Christmas season. Would you all stand with me?
friends, the prophecy isn't over. The prophetic words aren't yet done. Because throughout his word, God spoke not only of Jesus coming, but that he'd be coming back. Jesus not only has been here once, but the second coming still lies ahead. Friends, we have so much to look forward to. We have so much to look forward to that we can be thankful for his first birth and we can live in readiness for his second coming. Can you all say amen? Amen. Praise God. Yeah, hallelujah. Give him a hand, will you?